We're back with our Football 101. I am Michael Spath here with Steve Morrison for Michigan's 59-3 blowout victory over Maryland. And early in the first quarter, 14-11 to go, our first big play, a crossing pattern to J.U. Chasson. Yeah, and so uh, uh, Maryland's going to come with a fire zone. They're going to break five. Uh, they're going to rush five, and, and what that leaves in the back end is three deep and three underneath defenders. And really what we're focused here on is uh, taking advantage on only the three underneath droppers. It's a third and four, so we don't need a bunch. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to flood the strong side, which means we're going to bring four receivers uh, to an area where really they only have two defenders, and, and, and uh, Chesson's going to come across virtually uh, unguarded because of that. So we're taking advantage of the numbers that they have. Uh, dealing with the protection standpoint, now that they're bringing five, uh, the fact that we're in a bunch set to the field makes their contain rusher, who ends up coming unblocked in this scenario, having to go from width, and by that time you would say the quarterback's got enough time to get back, get set, and get the ball off before that guy can get a chance to him. So good, good scheme to get a first down. One of two touchdown throws for Wilton Spade on this day, arguably, probably inarguably, his best day. Here we are, 10-08 of the first quarter in a 34-yard touchdown strike to Amara Darbo. Yeah, again, uh, Wisconsin, or Wisconsin. Maryland's going to be in a, uh, a, a three-deep fire zone. We're going to break five, and uh, we're going to have three underneath defenders. I think we this is essentially a two-man route. We're going to bring McDoom across and give a little uh, jet sweep fake action, and that's designed to pull those uh, backers up a little bit. And then we're going to work levels on the, on the deep end on the weak side. We're going to bring Butt across on a deep over route. Uh, at about 15 yards, and then we're going to run Darbo on the skinny post and really working on the middle of the field safety here. And I think that's when Spate gets back, that's what he's looking for. If that safety covers the, the, uh, the deep post, then he's going to hit butt on the over route. Uh, what happens here, he actually drives uh, the deep over route by butt, leaving the middle of the field open for, uh, for Darbo, who runs a really nice route, understanding the concept. Uh, he's going to work. Uh, the corner route first just to get a little bit more separation from the outside leverage corner, and then it's just a nice pitch and catch for a, for a big touchdown. 6.47 to go in the first quarter, and Michigan gets a sack uh, on a key third and 12 early in the game. Yeah, and this, more than anything, is technique-driven uh, across the board. And we'll start with the defensive ends with, uh, with Wormley and Charlton. Uh, over on Wormley's side, both those guys get uh, a little bit wider, and what that does in their pass rush is it forces those offensive tackles as they set They've got to turn their shoulders to the sideline pretty quickly just to get an angle on that. And, and Wormley does a really nice job here. At that point, that, that tackle's exposed and uh, has really lost a, pop, a lot of power. So Wormley is able to drive him back to the quarterback. Uh, both those guys do a really nice job of collapsing the pocket and making the quarterback step up. And then you have a, a, a really a double A-gap pressure by our linebackers. And, and McCray inside, he's, he's actually going to foot fake the guard. Uh, to the B-gap, get him to set his feet, and he rips underneath, and he's able to get vertical, uh, again, causing the quarterback some problems. And then just a really nice job by getting in a, in a bull rush on a running back. Uh, he's controlled. He's not trying to go around him. He's trying to go through him. And uh, when the quarterback steps up, he's able to disengage that back fairly quickly and get a sack. So across the board, good technique by all those guys to get, uh, to get pressure, and I'm sure on the back end we had excellent coverage. Jabril Pepper's in, and he actually throws a pass here to Wilton Spade for a little razzle-dazzle, gets it downfield to J.U. Chasson at 418 of the first quarter. Yeah, you know, you're alert every time he's in the game that he's going to get a, uh, some type of play with him involved, and uh, in this case, they're going to reverse it around, and we've been talking for a couple weeks now, when's that first pass going to come, and we finally saw it, and it, it happened to be the first of a, a double pass, so uh, razzle-dazzle time, and uh, they're going to bring him on a reverse, obviously everybody's keyed on him. Uh, not expecting him necessarily to throw back to Spate, but uh, manageable to, uh, to get it back there to him. And I think Spate has, does a nice job here of being poised. He's got a guy uh, coming in his face, not using the best technique, but uh, still going to be in his, in his face. And then we're able to get two guys deep down, down the edge and uh, get a little bit of luck with uh, their corner falling down. He's supposed to be the deep third player here, but uh, real nice job with, with opening it up with some razzle-dazzle. And, and getting the biggest thing is executing all the different phases of this play because it's a lot. Steve, 251 in the first quarter, and Tyree Canal covers 18 yards to make this five yard tackle for loss against the Terps. Yeah, this is remarkable. We're in a two deep fire zone. He's going to be the half field safety. His pre snap alignment's at 12 yards from the line of scrimmage. And uh, we're going to bring Thomas off the edge, and, and uh, they're going to run a jet sweep. And Thomas does a nice job of making this ball bubble. Uh, you know, another two or three yards 
uh, making this guy go laterally. And there is absolutely no, once this ball declares, uh, Cannell knows he can trigger and go in. And that's exactly what he does without any hesitation. And like you said, he covers a ton of ground. There's no breakdown in his mechanics as he's going, and he takes a shot for a huge tackle for loss. For a half-field safety to make that play is uh, it's pretty remarkable. 12-15 in the second quarter, and a nice long pass completion, a 37-yarder to Jake Butt. Yeah, we've set this up with our, our good, strong run game that we've, we've been able to have uh, in this game. And, and what we're going to do is uh, uh, Maryland's going to be in a three-deep, four underneath base coverage zone, and uh, we're going to run a little play action. We're going to pull the backside guard, and, and what happens here is the inside backer who's responsible for the, the weak hook where we eventually put this ball is, is fooled by it. He's going to jump up a couple steps. You're going to see him actually have to make a full man turn to try to recover and get to his area, and by that time, uh, Jake Butt's already on the spot. And You look where that ball's caught. It's about two yards outside the hash, and, and that's what we would say that, that uh, weak hook curl player, that's his landmark where he needs to be standing. So a nice job of setting it up with the, the run that we've been able to do uh, during the day, and again, getting that pulling guard in there, get that guy to, to chase a couple more yards. So nice job getting him open. 6.22 to go in the second quarter, and uh, some pressure gets into the backfield, and Wilton Spate makes a nice play to elude it. And then he keeps his eyes downfield, and he hits Khalid Hill, who escapes into the route uh, for a 15-yard gain. Yeah, I thought this was his best play of the day, and uh, critical situation here with the third and seven. and. We've got a little bit of a breakdown in protection uh, and, and give credit to Maryland. They, they delay blitz here a little bit, and I think it gets us just off balance just enough where, where some, some rush goes through. But uh, Wilton does a great job of escaping pressure and really at that point having some, some outstanding poise uh, to stay alert and stay eyes downfield. And then you have just a real great hustle play by Hill to get open and, uh, and catch the pass and, and make something out of nothing. So it's not all going to be uh, roses there. There are going to be some breakdowns, but, but having the poise and the capability to make a big play afterwards. 3.22 to go in the second quarter, and Michigan picks up a nice quarterback sack with an outside speed rush from Chase Winovich. Yeah, we're going to be in our 30 look here and uh, have three down, and then we're going to walk uh, our, our three backers up inside. So we have the threat of, showing, or of bringing six. We ended up bringing four, and, and what we did in this game – and. It, Brought a combination of, of Peppers and Winovich off the edge in different combinations up and under and those sort of things. This opportunity here, we let, uh, we let Chase just do a nice speed rush up the field. He beats his man clean. And uh, on the other side, you've got a nice contained rush by, by Charlton. Keeps the quarterback back in there. But uh, good job gaming those guys and, and giving them opportunity to rush. And, then, and you know, also facing a different type of end for those tackles. You've got a, a good speed guy in, in uh, Winovich, and then you're also seeing some big power from Wormley. So uh, good job of switching those guys up. Final play of the first half, Steve. We don't do many, too many plays where the opponent gains 47 yards against Michigan, but uh, you want to do this one because of the hustle, the effort, and some a uh, really strong play from DeMonte Thomas to, to keep it from being a touchdown. Yeah, they, we got hurt a little bit with the middle screens, and that's going to happen when you're a man team, and that's a good man-beater type of concept to run. But they, they break this one out and uh, get off to the races there a little bit. And I think, uh, you know, you mentioned Thomas. I think it's, it's a, a, an outstanding job by him to know what the situation is in the game, and that's something we always try to stress to the kids, know the situation. And in this case... There's only a couple seconds left in half. So all he's trying to do is fight and string it out long enough and and give those guys that are chasing him down a chance to get there. And so he's successful in that. I thought that was real headsy. The other thing is, it's just great effort by McCray to to run all that way and to never give up and and to lay out and get a tackle. And, you know, we used to say uh, here at Michigan, just give me a place to stand. And that's what we're doing. We're giving an opportunity to fight another play. and, and, And certainly at this one, it's the end of the half. But also point out, Winovich is down there and, and as Charlton. And don't forget, those guys were on the rush, so they covered a lot of ground. I think, for, uh, again, we're giving up some big yards here, but I think the point that we're playing with outstanding effort and these guys are competitors and want to keep guys off the scoreboard is a huge factor. 14 minutes to go in the third quarter, and Brian Greasy says this really well. This is the threat of, of getting hit by, the, by a defensive line where the quarterback just wants to get rid of the ball as soon as he sees the pressure coming. And Taco Charlton, who we've talked about the last couple weeks, who's really good at those spin moves, makes another spin move here, bears down on the quarterback, and he just wants to toss it up. And unfortunately for him, Delano Hill is one that comes down with it. Yeah, and I think you're, you're looking at a backup quarterback who knows the reputation of this defense. And, uh, you know, I think we've had 
uh, on more than one occasion knocked a quarterback out of the game. And, and those quarterbacks are certainly aware of that, particularly the backup quarterback. So he comes in, uh, he's faced a little bit of pressure already, and, and in this situation, like you said, Charlton's quick on his spin move. He's up the field. We get good push from the tackle. And, uh, you know, we, we see a, a bad throw, a, a throw that's forced off his back foot because he doesn't want to get hit. And then we have uh, eyes on it in the back end and, and get a good turnover. So I think your reputation uh, is, is the cause of this defense and in, in, in the way they've been playing. 3.26 to go in the third quarter. Maryland goes for it on fourth and two. And Michigan, uh, you know, makes a nice play here by Ben Gettian to, to create a tackle for loss. Yeah, and they, they, they're going to try to have a little window dressing and start the running back out in an empty formation. And uh, Ben's going to be out in, in space covering him as that's his guy. And they're going to bring him back in. It's just a nice job of good eye control by, by Ben in terms of uh, keeping leverage on the back. And then, uh, uh, you know, it's assignment football. It's going to be a, a, a read option here for the quarterback. And, and uh, Chase Winovich is off the edge and, and it does a good enough job to uh, to take his man, make the quarterback hand it off, and then it's just a foot race. And like I said, Gideon's a great position. He gets the guy to run laterally, and uh, what you're going to see is a bunch other of his of his friends coming in to help him out. And not that he needs it, but uh, you know it's 38 nothing at this point. We've got guys flying around and making and big plays on a fourth and two. So uh, out, outstanding execution. 11.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Michigan does not want to give up a touchdown. And Maurice Hurst made an earlier big play in this drive. And here he gets another seven-yard loss to put uh, Maryland up against it late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and he's, uh, we've changed up our front a little bit here. We've got a couple of uh, uh, one shades or, or two eyes inside playing both A-gaps. And they're going to try to run a little G-sweep here. And, and the benefit of that, they're trying to get a down block by the tackle and, and get that guard pulled out around in front of the uh, uh, the runner and Mo Hurst is just so fast so vertical up the field on the snap of the ball that they, he beats a block back and, and that's a tough thing to do from an angle standpoint but he gets vertical, gets a big tackle for a loss and uh, second big play in this game so nice to see him being productive again 10-23 to go in the fourth quarter and the longest running play of the day for Michigan, a 53 yarder that Ty Isaac uh, slips, slips through the inside and then gets outside for a long run yeah, we've used this concept before, and, and uh, it's going to be a wham play where we take the fullback and we, we actually trap the nose guard or wham the nose guard and uh, had some success with that. Those guys are tough to move at times, and uh, it's a good way to, to get those guys pushed out of there and also gives the, the guards uh, up on the backers in a, in a real quick uh, scenario. So the ball pops really fast, and, and Isaac busted out to the outside for, for a really nice run and uh, gets – Questionable blocks down there, but uh, you know, great effort by by one to, to put his face in there. But you, you definitely want him looking forward and, and looking what's ahead, not what's behind. Three twenty six to go in the fourth quarter, and of course, an offensive play and a touchdown pass from John O'Corn to Dylan Kakoa Crawford. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, O'Corn did a nice job when he came in the game, as did a lot of those guys. And uh, uh, down here in the red zone, you're going to get a lot of five minute pressures in, in their man across the board. We get a breakdown. Uh, up top defensively uh, that uh, O'Corn's uh, capable enough to see and, and, and hit, uh, uh, hit him for a touchdown. Hit Crawford, not Edwards. Hit Crawford for a touchdown. And a nice job up front by those guys uh, protecting the ball. So a nice way to finish this game up and, uh, and again, getting some of those younger guys some reps. Steve, as a defensive coordinator, this must have been a nightmare scenario for you where you do a little, as you say, razzle-dazzle, and Jabril Peppers throws a pass back to Wilton Spade at about 14-8, to go in the, four, in the first quarter, and it completes a long pass to Amara Darbo. Our two, uh, I'm going to start this over again. <laughs>